dear students i am mrs prajeta your teacher of math subject i'm sure you all are doing well this session is from the chapter numbers up to 999 on the topic representing hundreds writing the number names and representing hundreds tens and ones in abacus and unit blocks by the end of this session you will be able to understand the following aspects with better clarity you will be able to understand how to represent numbers how to represent hundreds in abacus and unit blocks to write the number names and also how to represent represent hundreds tens and ones in abacus and also to read the number from an abacus and the unit blocks so after this session there will be an assessment plan for you please do not forget to take the assessment to check your understanding from the session so now let us begin with the session so first we will be learning about representing hundreds so let me share something with you all okay here is a ppt firstly let us recall what we have learned in the previous classes okay and then we'll move ahead with representing hundreds yes so here it is numbers up to 999 so in your screen you can see the blocks in it blocks right okay the first one that is yellow what does it represent is it ones tens or hundreds okay the second one which is in blue color it represents tens very good and the third one this one here this block represents hundreds block right so let us see yes ones tens and hundreds isn't it good now let's go to the next one how much do we get if we put 10 ones together the small ones block you know the ones block right the small block if we keep all the 10 small blocks how much do we get how many tens do we get here here we have the ones block okay how many ones blocks are there here count 1 2 3 4 5 Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten ones. Ten ones. So, if there are ten ones, if the ten ones are kept together, how many tens do we get? Think we have done this in the previous class. We need to recall what we have done. So, how many tens we will get? Yes. Let us check. Ten ones is equal to. Or ten ones make one ten, right? We have learnt it in the previous class, right? Ten ones make one ten. So ten ones together make one ten. So how much do we get if we put ten tens together? If we put ten tens together. So here I have tens. And how many tens do I have? Shall we count? This is one ten. That is ten. Two ten. That means twenty. Three ten. Thirty. Four ten. Forty. Five ten makes fifty. Six ten makes sixty. Seven ten makes seventy. Eight ten makes eighty. Nine ten makes ninety, and ten ten makes 
10 10 makes how much right 10 10 makes 100 okay so 10 10 makes 100 i have this 100 block in my hand here okay so when i put together 10 tens it makes 100 okay keep that in mind 10 10 together makes 100 yes now what is this how many blocks can you see you can see one block okay and that is is it tens block or ones block or unit block or hundred blocks is it it is hundreds block right so this is hundred blocks. so how much is this here this is 100 okay this is 100 and how do we write 100 one zero zero okay how this number is written in figures in figures means numbers how do you write 100 we write it as one zero zero 100 how is it written in words in words the spellings spelling of 100 how do you write it spelling of one o n e one hundred h u n d r e d hundred break the word hun h a n hun dread d r a d dread very easy very easy spelling isn't it one spelling of one and hundred h u n d r e d you can write as for the sound okay 100 is the smallest three digit number 100 is the smallest three digit number we write 99 isn't it how many digit does 99 have 99 has two digit after 99 which number do we write 100 we write the number 100 and how many digits does this number have it has one two three it has three digits okay it has three digits and this is the first three digit number that means it is the smallest three digit number is that clear this is the smallest three digit number 100 good They, would, they will be showing you the hundreds block like this and you have to count it, okay? So the first one you can see here is 100, only one block, so it is 100. How many blocks can you see? How many hundreds block can you see? Two, this is 100, this is 100, so 200 block, it is 200. Here how many hundreds block you can see? 300 block, so it is 300. Here we can see 400 block, right? So it is 400. The next one we can see 500 block. You can see it here, see 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. So it is 500. Block. Next one, how many blocks can you see? How many hundreds block can you see? That means you have to count in hundreds. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. So the number is 600. Next one, you will have to count the hundreds block. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700. Okay, let's go to the next one. Count it along with me. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800. Good. Next. Come on, count it now. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 
hundred, eight hundred, and nine hundred. Okay, nine hundred block. That means the number is nine hundred. Is it clear? Shall we go to the next one? What is this? This is a abacus, right? And how many places do you see in the abacus here? We have three places. We have three spikes. You can see that, na? No? Three spikes. So this is one. This is one, and this is one. Three spikes. So here I have hundreds place. Here I have tens place, and here I have ones place. Okay. Now, so let us learn to read the numbers in the abacus also. Shall we? Okay. Here, in the hundreds place, how many rings can you see? You can see one bead in hundreds place. So how many hundreds? It's one hundred. And can you see any bead here in the tens place or ones place? No, so it is zero zero. So one zero zero will be one hundred. So how do you write two hundred in the hundreds place? You need to put two beads. Okay, so this is one hundred, two hundred. Is there anything in tens place? No. Here in ones place? No. So this is number two here zero zero. That will be equal to two hundred. In the same way. Here, in these three places, there is hundreds, tens, and ones. They have put the beads in the hundreds place. And how many beads have they put? Three beads. Okay, so that is one hundred, two hundred, three hundred. So it is three hundred, three zero zero. Now next, coming to four hundred. How do they represent four hundred in Abacus? You have to put four beads in. Hundreds place, right? So that is one, two, three, four. The hundreds place. Number four here, zero in tens, zero in ones. Okay, you can see that there is no number in zero and ones, ones and tens, right? We're coming to the next one. Here, in the hundreds place, how many beads can you see? We have one, two. Three, four, and five beads. So how do we count it? Hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred. Okay. So how do we read this? Five hundred. In the next one, we have three places, and the beads in the hundreds place. How many? How many beads do we have here? One hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred. So the number is six hundred. Okay, here, come on, you have to count it and tell me now. What is the number? Seven hundred. In the next one, it is eight hundred. Eight beads in the hundreds place, so eight hundred. And the next one, the last one we have. Nine beats in the hundreds place, so it is nine hundred. I hope it is understood. I hope it's clear how to write or how to represent hundreds in an abacus. Good. Now let's go to the next one. Identify the number and write its name. Okay. Here, which block can you see? Is it a ones block, tens block, or hundreds block? It is hundreds block. And how many hundreds block do we have? How many hundreds block do we have? We have four hundreds block, right? What is next? We have tens. How many tens we have? Count it. One, which is ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty. 
And how many ones do we have? One. How will you count it once now? You have to say the number, single number. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we have how many hundreds? Four hundreds. That is four hundred. And how many tens? Six tens. Six tens means sixty. And how many ones? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six ones. Now, how do we write this in figures? And also, how do we write the number names? We will learn about it by watching a video. Okay? Let us watch the video now. And then we will come back to this and do the exercise. Okay? Shall we watch the video? Yes. So let me now share the video with you. So here is the video. Okay. Let us go through the video and learn how to write the numbers in figures and words. Okay. Let us start now. In this tutorial, we're going to practice how to read and write three-digit numbers. Let's take a look at the number 384. Well, if you remember, the 4 is in the 1's place, so that means 4 1's. The 8 is in the 10's place, so that means 8 10's or 80. And the 3 is in the 100's place, so that means 3 hundreds or 3 hundreds. So let's take a a look at the first way, expanded form. So we're going to expand out the number and look at each place and what it means. So what does expanded mean? Well, if we look at this picture of this person expanding out this rubber band, that's what we're going to do with the number. We're going to expand it out like we're pulling out a rubber band. We're not changing it. We're just going to pull out each the value of each digit. So here's my four ones. Here's my eight tens, and here's my three hundreds. So when I write it out in expanded form, it looks like this. Three hundred plus eight tens, or eighty, plus four. And don't forget the pluses, because those are very important when we show a number in expanded form, because that's what it really means. In fact, that's why we read it this way. Three hundred eighty-four. Three hundred eighty-four. Now, what about standard form? Well, that's actually a very easy way to write it out because that's the way you probably see numbers most of the time. 384. And then word form is just like it sounds. When I read the number 300, I would write out what I'm speaking using words and my ABCs. 384. 384. At this point, I'm not so concerned about how you spell it. We're just going to practice how to write out a number and write what we hear our words speak, 384, and we can worry about spelling another time. So let's try another word, another number. Let's write out 562 in three different ways. So here is expanded form. I've got my 500s. I've got my six tens, so that means 60, and I've got my two ones. And so notice how in expanded form I wrote the value of all three digits. Two is the value of this digit, 60 is the value of my six, and 500 is the value of my five. And that's very important that we include every single digit in a number when we write it in expanded form. Standard form is the usual way that you see numbers. And then word form, if I speak it, 500, 62, and I write it out using my ABCs in words. So those are my three ways that I can read and write three digit numbers. Thanks for tuning in. Okay. So that was about how to write the numbers in figures and in words. Okay, so how to write the number names. Now let us continue with the PPT. Okay, so let me share it with you all again. So here we are.
Yes. Let me start. Now we stopped over here, right? Now that we watch the video, we know how to write the numbers, isn't it? Now what is this here? We have hundreds block. How many hundreds block? Four. And how many tens block? Six tens. That is sixty. And how many ones block we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So what is the number? Are you ready with the number? Let me show you what the number is. The number is four hundred sixty-six. How do we read this number? Four hundred sixty-six. Isn't it? So the answer is right. Now, how do we write this in number names? How do we write the number names or the spellings? How do we write it? Now, so as you're reading it, as you're reading the number, you will be writing the same way. Okay. So we will read the number as four hundred sixty-six. So now let us see how to write it. Okay. So four. Spelling of four, F O U R, hundred, H U N D R E D, sixty. Six tens is sixty. S I X T Y, sixty. And how many ones? Six ones. S I X six. Okay, so four hundred sixty-six. As you read the number, you will write the spellings and you will write in words in the same way. Is it clear? Okay. Let's go to the next one. Again, you have to identify the number and write the number names. Okay, so how many hundreds do we have here? Come on, count it. So I'm not helping you this time. Okay. Done. Now, next. They have given hundreds, and what comes after hundreds? Tens. But Can you see the tens there? There are no tens. Okay, if there is nothing in the tens place. What is the number you have to write? Zero. Okay, so it is zero in the tens place. And what do we have in the ones place? What do we have in the ones place? We have two unit blocks. So are you ready with the answer? We have seven in the hundreds place, nothing in the tens place, and two in the ones place. So let us check the number. What is the number? Read the number now. The number is not seven zero two. How do you read it? Seven hundred two. So how do you write in words? We write it as seven hundred two. Okay, read the number again. It is seven hundred two. And how do you write it? The same way as you say that is seven hundred two. Clear? Is it clear? Yes. Now shall we identify the number using a backus? Yes. Let's go. Now here, what we can see is. And about this, okay? So you can see the beats in the hundreds place, tens place, and ones place. Now, first we will start from the hundreds place. Can you count it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now this is not the way you count, okay? As it is in hundreds place, you will count it in hundreds. So that is one hundred. Two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred. Okay, so it is nine hundred in the hundreds place, and what is the number in the tens place? One. Okay, so it is a ten, isn't it? If it is one ten, we say it as ten. Now coming to the ones place, how many beats do we have? One, two, three. Here, as it is a single number, we are counting one, two, three. Okay, so we have three bits. So, what do you think is the number? 
I'll count up till three. You have to be ready. Okay. One, two, three. Ready? Let me share the answer now. The number is nine hundred thirteen. I repeat, nine hundred thirteen. Did you get it right? Good. Now let us see how to write the number names. Number name of nine hundred thirteen in words. So when you write it, is like this. Okay, nine. Spelling of nine. Spelling of hundred and thirty. Is it clear? Yes. One more. So you have to do it on your own. Okay, I'll give you some time. See the beads in hundreds place. First, write hundreds place. Then make a note of the tens place. Count in tens. And once you will count in once. Hundred you will count in hundreds. Tens place you will count in tens. And ones place you are going to count in ones. So ready? Can I share the answer now? What is the answer? Say it aloud. Six hundred eighty-six. Six hundred eighty-six. So let us see how we can write it in words. Six hundred eighty-six. I hope you got it right. Good. Okay. So now, coming to the next one, I would like to share a video with you all. So let us watch the video and then we'll move ahead with solving exercises. Okay. So here is the video. So this video. Is just to revise about uh, representing numbers in abacus. Okay, so let us just watch this. Numbers place value. What is an abacus? An abacus is an instrument with which we can count numbers and understand the place value of each digit in a number. An abacus has spikes. depending on the number of digits in a number to count a two digit number we use a two spike abacus to count a three digit number we use a three spike abacus the digits are represented using beads in a two spike abacus the spike on the right side denotes digits at one's place and The spike which is on the left side denotes digits at tens place. For example, the number five is represented with five beads at the ones place. The number twenty-six is represented using two beads at tens place and six beads at ones place. In a three-spike abacus, the spike on the leftmost side. Denotes digits at hundreds place. For example, the number two hundred and fifteen is represented with two beads at hundreds place, one bead at tens place, and five beads at the ones place. Let us see how to count numbers in an abacus. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Counting in the same manner. If we skip count in tens, then thirty, forty. Fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, hundred. Okay, so that was about representing numbers in abacus and reading the number as well. Okay, so now let us go to 
the next one that is solving the exercise from the textbooks. So here is the textbook. We will be solving exercise 1.1, which is in page number 9. Okay. So coming to the first question, you have to count and write the correct number. If you can see the caterpillar, the first one, the first number is given as 104. Right? And the second number is missing. The third number is 106. Now what you have to do is, you have to fill in the missing numbers. Okay? So the first one, I will just guide and complete. The next three sums, you have to do it independently. Is it clear? So let me solve the first one now. The first caterpillar has a number 104. Okay? Please do not read it as 104. You'll have to read the number as 104. What comes after 104? The number is 105. Good. After 105, the next number is 106. It is already given there. So what are the other two numbers which comes next? 106. After 106, we have 107. So the next number is 108. So you have to write it in the correct order. Okay? So you have to solve the second question, third and the fourth. You have to do it on your own. Is it clear? Okay, you can start doing now. So after solving these questions, we move on to the second one. Match the numbers with their number names. In the first column, they have given the numbers like 116, 739, 360, 282, 499, 821. Right? In the second column, they have given the number names. Number names of these numbers here. Okay? So what you have to do is, you have to read the number names and match it with the correct number. Okay? Read all the number names from the second column. Okay, read all the number names from the second column and then it will be easy for you to match the numbers. Okay? Yes, you can complete this exercise too. I hope it is done now. So now, let us come back. Yes. So in this session, we learned about representing hundreds in abacus and unit blocks. Right? We also learned about writing the number names. Isn't it? How to write the number names, the hundreds, tens, and ones. And we also solved the textbook exercise. So now you have to solve the worksheet. That is worksheet 2. I will just show you the worksheet. So here is the worksheet 2. You have to solve this worksheet independently. Okay. It's very easy. You have to match the tens and ones. So read the first column. Then go to the second column. See the number and match it. Okay. In the second one, you have to take the correct representation of the number 100. So see both the abacus which... Abacus represents number 100. So that column has to be ticked. In the third one, tick the correct representation of the number 100 using unit block. So which unit block here represents 100? Okay. And here you have to read and see which is the 100th block here. So this is 400 or this is 200. Count the 100th block and write. Okay, and the last one here, write the hundreds represented on the abacus. Okay, you have to count the beads in the hundreds place and write the number. 
Even the next one, you will count and write the number. So this exercise or this worksheet has to be done independently without any help. So I'm sure you will be able to do it on your own. Okay, so that is all for today's class. Please revise and practice more exercises. Okay, so I'll see you in the next class. Bye-bye.